And a pleasant good morning. You're listening to WHLJ 97.5 FM, 103.3 and 1400 AM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. 62, 62 degrees in our metro area this morning. Forecast calls to mostly sunny skies today. Uh, high around 78. Mostly clear tonight. And Lows around 53. Somewhat partly cloudy Saturday, high 78. <laughs> ah, fall is here. It is in the air. The time now at 5 a.m. for Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live this morning from the Upper Room Ministries, Incorporated, 702 R.C. Davis Parkway out of Waycross, Georgia, where the pastor is, Pastor Samuel Sellers III, the host of Command Your Morning, it's Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers comes your way Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. The morning program is recorded and played back Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. on the Glory Bound Train. Listen online at www.foxy97.com. Command your morning is a service of the Upper Ministries Incorporated, 702 R.C. Davis Parkway, Waycross, Georgia. And let's now head to Waycross for this morning's radio broadcast. Right here on WHLJ, I'm Warren Lee. WHLJ, 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Georgia. 1400 AM and 103.3 W277DN, Moultrie, Georgia. Victorious Living Bible Institute Incorporated, an affiliate of Christian Bible Institute and Seminary, a non-denominational Bible Institute founded as part of the Christian Education Department of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries Incorporated, based in Waycross, Georgia. VLBI has expanded now with an on-site campus in Kenya. Our mission is to equip men and women of God to be productive and functioning parts of the local body of Christ. VLBI provides affordable biblical education and leadership training for ministers, professionals, and laypersons. We will provide you with the skills, education, and character needed to effectively serve, equip, and shape the lives of others as they pursue excellence in Christian education, ministry, and leadership. Study on site at our Waycross campus or online in our learning center. Visit www.victoriouslbi.org. Call 1-833-884-8880. Command your morning with Evangelist Renee Sellers on the prayer line, Monday through Friday, beginning at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday with devotion, prayer, and pronouncement of daily affirmations. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to say. Dial 1-712-770-4010. Using access code 266590. That's 1 712 770 4010. Using access code 266590. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to see on the prayer line with Evangelist Renee Sellers. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III, and we are live at 5 this morning on this Faith in It Friday morning, and you can hear me a little bit better to God be the glory. We're excited today to be coming to you live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. We're also online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y. 97.com, and you can join us on the conference call at 712-770-4010, access code 266590. 
There'll be a recap tonight at 7 p.m., and this broadcast will also be available on Spreaker and YouTube later on uh, this morning. We're going to do a little review. We kind of started our prayer, 31 days of prayer and fasting yesterday, but since we were not on the air, I'm just going to back up just a little bit and just kind of recap what we talked about yesterday morning. We were not on the air because I still was not, uh, my voice was still a little weak, and I'm uh still having to take care of it this morning, but to God be the glory for being able to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to pray about. We have a lot to pray about, and this is why intercessory prayer is a necessity. We're going to give you a definition of prayer, so simple definition. And as I shared with them yesterday, if you've ever done a detailed study on prayer, then this is going to be just review for you, and then there are going to be some things as we go along, and and I may call on some other people to help teach on on certain areas of prayer. But some of this is going to be review. Some of this is going to be refreshing. But I want to encourage you that uh, repetition helps us to remember This is six years yesterday, six years of Command Your Morning. I believe we've been on the air for four or five five years, I believe it is, but six years of Command Your Morning, and we give God all the praise uh, for this ministry and for your partnership. But we're going to get right on into our studies on prayer this whole month. We're going to be talking about prayer. That is the foundation for every believer, even as all the way going back to the book of Acts, as the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, they began to do the work of ministry, but that ministry was founded on prayer. As a matter of fact, it goes all the way back to where the disciples said to Jesus, teach me how to pray. I'm going to ask this phenomenal woman of God, the evangelist Paulette Griffin, to take us in, uh, to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Lord God, you are worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. There is none like thee. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is peace forevermore. And this is where we desire to be one with you. We thank you for the open heaven. We thank you for the fresh anointing. We thank you for stirring up the very gifts in us right now, Lord God that we may come together from the north, the south, the east, and the west together in your name, giving you glory, praise, and honor for all that you've done in our lives and what you're yet to do, Lord God. Heavenly Father, as we learn thy word, Lord God, as thy word is shared with us, Lord God, Heavenly Father, as you, Lord God, break down each and every verse right now, Lord God, and give us a clearer understanding, we thank you right now as you allow the Holy Spirit to work through this precious woman of God. Heavenly Father, we ask right now, Lord God, that you open up our spiritual mind, ears, and hearts to receive thy word this day, that it may be planted upon good ground, to come up in the fruition as you called it to be. We come giving you glory, praise, and honor for all that you've done in our lives and what you're yet to do, Lord God. We thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Pastor Samuel Evangelist Renee Sellers, for bringing forth Command Your Morning Prayer Line on Foxy 97.5 FM. We thank you for each and every family and home that's represented upon the line, Lord God. Heavenly Father, every ministry right now, Lord God, as you minister into our hearts, minister into our very souls right now, Lord God, give us a clear understanding right now, Lord God, that we may serve you more and serve you better. We thank you for all things. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. And thank you so much, Pastor Gloria Moore Wright, for a powerful teaching on last night on prayer as we began our three-day prayer summit on Facebook Live. And it concludes Sunday morning at 1030 at the Upper Room and on Facebook Live. So I want to encourage you to join us tomorrow at 12 noon on Facebook Live where our Kenya family will be joining us, Pastor Susan Barasa of Greater Victory Fellowship, Kenya. And then on Saturday night, uh, uh, Prophetess Tina Jones, Beauty for Ashes Ministries, Orlando, Florida, will minister to us on, at 7 o'clock. Both of these ladies are students at Victorious Living Bible Institute. So I'm excited about giving them the opportunity to share. So yesterday we talked about the power of intercessory prayer. We're going to review from what we shared yesterday for those that were on the conference call and continue to pray for me as I go forth on this morning. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, 
verse 7 through 8. It says, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receiveth, and he that seeks, find, and to him that knocks, the door shall be opened unto you. I want to go back to, to share some different quotes on prayer that some great leaders and some great ministers have shared with us concerning uh, the power of prayer and the need for prayer. There are some phenomenal leaders that have told us that nothing happens aside from prayer, that God can do anything except from the the prayers of the righteous. Let me go to, to those quotes for just a moment. I wasn't going to go here. But John Wesley said that God does nothing on earth save in answer to believe in prayer. And so what we have to understand is while God is omnipotent, while he is sovereign, while there is nothing that is impossible with him, he chooses to use individuals. He chooses to use people. He could have went and, and took care of Pharaoh all by himself because he was God. But if you go back to the scripture, and the apostle brought this out the other day, that he told Moses that I'll make you a God that he, a God to him, lowercase g in some translations, not all. But Moses was chosen to go before Pharaoh to tell him to let my people go. God could have, could have orchestrated that and could have took care of that all by himself, but he chose to use a man. He chose to use a man. Billy Graham, he said, we are living in dangerous times. And, you know, Billy Graham has gone on to be with the Lord. We were living in dangerous times when he was alive, and we're still living in dangerous times. And if there was ever a time when we need to pray, it is now. Somebody say, it is now. The time to pray is now. Our president was just diagnosed and his wife with COVID-19. So, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how you feel about an individual even Jesus taught us to pray for even Jesus interceded for his enemies come on somebody even Jesus he taught us I said when we were doing that series that Jesus was still teaching even while he was on the cross and no matter how you feel about an individual as believers the first response watch this now intercessors are the body of Christ I call first responders because we are the individuals that God wants to use to intercede for people, to intercede for nations, to intercede for our governmental leaders. Jesus taught us how to be intercessors, even for those that treat, mistreat us, when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what. They do. Our responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, is to be ministers of reconciliation, ambassadors for Christ, those of us who love, live, and lead like Jesus. And I heard someone say yesterday that we have truly, for, or, or we truly uh, do not understand honor. That we do not understand honor this is what i'm about to say is not going to be popular with a lot of people but i'm going to say it and 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 just be encouraged i hear what everyone is saying i understand what everybody's saying i'm not judging anybody else for what they're saying so just hear my heart when i say that even if you don't like something or people are doing something that you don't like because of uh, certain positions that people hold we honor the position if we don't like certain things about the individual we honor the position even David honored Saul even after he started trying to kill him and so thereby who, who is going to intercede for a nation ladies and gentlemen a country that is certainly in need of God Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 says and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap intercessors stand in the gap before me it says for the land that I should not destroy it but I found 
none. Ladies and gentlemen, who is going to intercede? Ladies and gentlemen, for this country, will you be the one? Will you be the one? Moses even interceded for the children of Israel, even in their wickedness. Will you be the one? And so he says more can be done by prayer than anything else. Prayer is our greatest weapon. And somebody else said that prayer is the most preached and less practiced doctrine of the church. Somebody might want to write that down. And somebody said, let's make the devil a liar. It says, they say that prayer is the most preached and less practiced doctrine of the church. When we were going and packing out, I've been watching concerts from last year, and I'm like, I, I really miss going to services where we packed out for concerts and we're packed out for certain worship services, but we'll pack out the hall for, for a concert. But how many times do we pack out the, the ministry for prayer? Mm. The, the most preached and less practiced doctrine of the church. And, and, and Oswald Chambers says that prayer does not fit us for the greater works. Prayer is the greater works. And remember what Jesus, he, in Luke 18 and 1, men ought to always pray and not lose heart. And not lose heart. Yes, Esther fasted and with, with the people. She called the fast for the people when they got the news that the Jews was about to be killed. But Esther went from prayer to performance. Esther went from praying to doing. I, I, I know prayer is not mentioned in the text, but fasting and prayer are always synonymous. And so thereby she went from fasting and calling on the Lord to doing something about what she saw. And so even as we are teaching on prayer, is God giving you instructions to do something? As we are teaching on prayer, is God telling you to go to and forgive that individual? One thing I don't understand is that we speak in tongues and we, we, we say we are intercessors and we say we are God's prophets and we say we are a fivefold ministry and we say we are true followers of Jesus. But why is it, that, and, and we are praying and we're going before the Lord and we're going to church and we're doing all these things, why? Why is it so hard for people like that to forgive? Holy Spirit wouldn't let me do praise and worship one, one Sunday morning because because of my attitude toward the individual. When they walked in the room, I, it was like something came over me. It was some resentment there. And the Holy Spirit said to me, until you let that go, you're only going to be able to go so far. Before I could open my mouth to sing praise and worship, Holy Spirit co convicted me. So how is it that we, we love God, but we can't forgive? And so, and first of all, we got to get rid of that if we're going to be effective in prayer. So what is prayer? Prayer is simple, communicating with God, talking to God, having a little talk with our Father, having a conversation with Him. Although it's a simple definition, it does take on different forms. But basically, we got to understand that it's when we talk with God and not only talking to God, but ladies and gentlemen, we've got to make time for him to talk to us. As I said yesterday, and I've said so many times before, that so often we will pray. And, we'll, and, and then I want to say this, too, that, that, yes, we petition, we make supplication, we make requests of God. But I want us to learn over the next 31 days to not start our prayer with asking for things. I know that, ladies and gentlemen, that, that I, as I said yesterday, that, that when you're praying and you're sincere in your prayer, that God hears your sin, sin, sincere prayer. He hears the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, no matter how you pray. But I want us to understand that, that we don't start our prayers asking for something, but we start our prayers at, with adoration, making adoration unto him. How how often, how much time do we spend saying, Lord, I thank you, uh, than we spend saying, Lord, I need something. Mm. Lord, Lord I, I, I need something. And so prayer in Genesis 12 and 8 is described as calling upon the name of the Lord. Todd Delaney, as we get ready to close, we're going to play this song, Psalm 18. He wrote this song from the scripture because I said that much of the, the songs and the praise and worship songs that we sing are prayers that are set to music. 
And many of the Psalms of David were prayers. And so Todd Delaney wrote the song, Psalm 118, and he says, I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when we get up to pray, let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to adore him. Just begin to thank him. Then you can do what Pastor Wright talked about last night, the acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and then we added intercession, adoration. Lord, you are my God. Lord, you are Jehovah Shalom. Lord, you are, oh God, sick and new Father, we bless your name. We adore you this morning. We rise early and make known our adoration to you. Then confession. Lord, anything in me that's not like you, I ask you to forgive me and purge me of any and all unrighteousness. Forgive me for unforgiveness. Forgive me for resentment. Lord, like David said, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Thanksgiving, Lord, now I thank you. I thank you for another day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you that, that Lord, I move and breathe and have my being because of you. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to see another day. Lord, I thank you for opening my vocal cords back up. Lord, I thank you for movement in my in my limbs. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to walk on my own and breathe on my own in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to, to, to move on behalf of the people that are listening today, Lord. I ask you to give them the desires of their heart as they delight themselves in you. I ask you to heal those that are dealing with COVID-19. So many people that we know. Oh, God, with the stripes of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you that they are healed. And so we were crying out to God, I will call on the name of the Lord. And a crying unto God is mentioned in Psalm 27 and 7. Some prayers take the form of drawing near to God, looking up to God, lifting up our soul to the Lord, seeking God. Remember, I, I, I didn't grow up in, in a Pentecostal church, but I used to I hear a lot of stories. And sometimes I can't go back in time, but there are times I was like, I, I would love to have been down there and seeking the Lord the way they did and seeking the face of God making supplication and so prayer is communication and it's not a one-way conversation it's not a one-way conversation a lot of us listen we're seeking answers from God but we're not taking time to listen to him we're seeking answers from God, but we got our ears open to other voices. Come on, somebody. We got our ears open to our friend's voice, and that's okay to have a confidant. It's okay, but there's, listen, but there's, listen, when, when I was trying to call my spiritual mother and my friend, when I was going through a challenge, I couldn't get in touch with them, and I believe God orchestrated that so that I can stay connected to him. Mm. I believe you orchestrate. I, it worked for my good. Because it opened the door for command your morning six years ago. It worked for my good because when I couldn't reach them, God was letting me know, watch this now, I was becoming co-dependent on people and not interdependent on God. And so what we have to understand that when we're going through challenges, listen, if you can't reach pastor, if you can't reach me, if you can't reach the mother of the church, if you can't reach Deacon Harris, ladies and gentlemen, God will never leave you. He, will, he is not too far out of your reach. As a matter of fact, listen, he's right Right there all the time. While you're looking for somebody else, he's waiting on you to call on him. Can I say that again? <laughs> While you're reaching out for somebody else, our father is, is, is right there. I'm right here. I said I'd never leave you nor forsake you. I'm right here. Yes, we need other people in our lives. How can two walk together lest they agree? Two are better than one, but there is nobody like God. So he showed me, and I know from personal experience that there are moments that when you can't get connected to other people, that's God allowing things and orchestrating things so that you'll be connected to him. And so sometimes it, even when, when we pray, we got to understand I shared from 1 Kings 19 where Elijah was running from wicked Jezebel. 
She was running from wicked Jezebel, and and this after he had just had this great victory of defeating the prophets of Baal. This woman threatened his life. She threatened to kill him. He's had this great victory. Now he is in in the in the cusp of a great warfare. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes, because this is so real. Whenever, and I thank God for the victories that we have in ministry. I thank God for every time that God moves in ministry, but I'm, I've matured enough to know that whenever there's a great victory, to not lose focus, to not get distracted. Because when, like Elijah, he had a great victory, but he encountered great warfare through this Jezebel uh, uh Queen Jezebel in the Word of God. And so those of us today, yes, but you got to understand, whenever there's great uh, warfare, there will be great victory. 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. The prophet Elijah is so messed up behind this that he wants to give up and die. He goes and he goes under a broom tree, and he just wants to, to, to sleep until he doesn't wake up anymore. He just wants to lay there and die. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in 1 Kings 19 and 4 that he prayed that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Watch this now. He's praying, and he's crying out to God in his moment of distress. And I used to say that God does not respond to our tears. He responds to our faith. But I want somebody to understand I had to change that because from personal experience, I know God does respond to our tears. God does respond to our hurts. God does respond when we're going through as he did for Elijah Ladies and gentlemen, he prayed that he might die, and he said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father. Listen, he asked the Lord to take his life, but let me help you. The Lord would not let him give up. And I want to encourage you this morning on this Faith and Friday. I know there have been moments that you wanted to give up and die, but I want to encourage you that, listen, don't give up. Listen, I know there have been moments that you got so depressed that you did not want to wake up, but I want to encourage you do not wake up from my personal life. I have experienced how God would not allow you to give up, even in my tears, even in my depression, even in my moments where I really didn't want to keep going. The Lord gave me the strength to get up, get back up again. And I want to encourage you that God, even with your tears, he is right there all the time. Huh. I didn't know it at the moment, but the prophet I'm like, literally showed me that moment when I was in my room depressed and, and with a spirit of discouragement. They were, they, the enemy was discouraging me about my school. He was discouraging me with some family issues. He was discouraging me and trying to tell me what VLBI would not be. And, the, and, and some things, that, watch this, some things the enemy told me back then, I will not even repeat. They were so bad. I have not even repeated it to my husband because I refuse to be a mouthpiece for the enemy. Can somebody help me say amen? I refuse to repeat what the enemy has said about my life and ministry. And you got to be intentional and refuse to repeat the words of the enemy. I have not repeated it to this day. I won't repeat it. And because you got to be mindful that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we got to be reminded that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you're going to say anything, say what does say at the Lord. Because Jesus came that we might have life. Come on, somebody. And have that life more abundantly. And so, but, but Elijah, he wanted to die, but God would not let him give up. He wanted to give up on himself. But God wouldn't give up on him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, just like Elijah, the Lord sent an angel to provide for him when he wanted to give up and die. He sent an angel to, to, to provide bread and cake and water because he wanted to give up and die. Like anybody that's going through depression, Elijah ate and went back to sleep. Like anybody that's in a dark moment, he ate and went back to sleep. But the Lord would not let him stay there. And I want to encourage you this morning, listen, as we pray for you, you can't stay. Stay there. You can't stay in the Abbasia. You can't stay in that dark place. You can't stay in that dark room. You can't stay in that dark moment. What are you doing there? I was about to call somebody's name. What are you doing there, Elijah? 
What are you doing there? I hear the word Pam. I hear the name Pamela. What are you doing there, Pamela? What are you doing there, Pamela? Come out of that dark place. What are you doing there? If I'm talking to Pamela, if Pamela is listening, I want you to call the radio station, listen, and let them know that was me or inbox me on Facebook. But, Pamela, you can't stay there. So he went into a cave and spent the night in that place, and the the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I've been zealous for the Lord, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, all these things, and killed your prophets with the sword. I'm alone, and I am left, and they seek to take my life. But this is what we have to remember as we uh, get before the Lord, as we uh, uh, prostrate, no matter the posture. Because I said yesterday that when we pray, it's not about the posture. It's about our approach. And even with your tears, listen, even in tears, when you go before God because you're crying on, crying out to God and, and not the psychologist because you're crying out to God and not your BFF because you're crying out to God and, and not other people. When you cry out to God, he hears you. And that is a sincere person that is recognizing their dependence on God. Even when you're crying and you call on him, he acknowledges that you're calling on him because you need him. Jesus, oh my, Jesus called on the Father and said, why have you forsaken me? He had, even in, though he was divine, he was human, and he acknowledged at that moment that I need my Father. I need my Father. And so thereby, it says in verse 11, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountain. See, what we got to understand as we go back, even though Elijah was depressed, God was responding to his cry. God was responding to his cry. And so I've been very zealous. He says, uh, verse 11, he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. See, see, listen, God was giving him instructions, but it's up to, it was up to Elijah to obey. Let's take a quick break for Station ID before I finish reading this. We are live at 5 on WHLJ 97.5 FM, talking about the, the power of intercessory prayer. But we, we, we haven't even gotten into the intercessory part real deep yet, but we're live at 5 on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com, and you can join us on the call at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. There'll be a recap tonight at 7 p.m. on WH. L J. There'll be a recap tonight. First Kings nineteen eleven. Go out, the Lord says to Elijah, and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we're looking for answers and all the noise. But ladies and gentlemen, there are moments that we have to listen to God, and He would do. Look, listen, He would do it by a still small voice. He'll speak to your heart by a still small voice. And so, I want you to learn to not only pray and and, and talk to God, but give Him time to talk to you. That means sometimes you can't get up after fifteen minutes. Sometimes you gotta lay there and, and and remove all the noise. Why we can't, why can't we hear from God? Because we're tuned into all the noise and we're not listening for that still small voice. Why is it that we're not getting the answers that we think we need? Because we're listening to all the noise and not taking time to listen to that still small voice. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as you begin to pray and on this journey, a lot of times we're doing all the talking. 
But there are times we've got to let God talk. When we pray, you can be standing, you can be kneeling, you can be bowing down. It doesn't matter. Listen, it's about your approach. As I said about Esther, she went before the king after prayer. She went before him with confidence and, and with boldness, and she won his favor. And what could have killed her because she was not invited to go before the king, he gave her grace to come boldly to him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you and I have the opportunity to go before the throne of grace, to go boldly before the throne of grace at any time. And so the Bible talks about prayer and the different types of prayer. As we talk from Scripture about the different types of prayers, we get ready to close. We're going to be real brief. First of all, we are admonished to always pray. We are admonished that men ought to always pray. And Paul says that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse verse 18, he talks about all prayer. And so when we pray, the, the one type of prayer is worship and praise. Worship and praise. Psalm 104, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. What does worship do? Worship is giving honor and devotion to someone and in our case we give honor and devotion to God praise is thanksgiving and it's an expression of gratitude not only for what God has done but for who he is so the next time when you all come to upper room on Sunday morning come on in with a praise and and thanksgiving to God come on in with worship and honor and devotion to God and we are to worship as Jesus said to the woman at the well in spirit and in truth because God is a Spirit, John 4, 23 through 24. Worshiping God in truth means that we worship him on, on, on the basis of what's revealed in the word. God is truth. The word is truth. To worship him in spirit is to be sincere about our worship, putting God before everything. And I often say that worship is not limited to Sunday morning, but worship is an everyday way of life. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we worship our God, we do so putting him first, making him priority making him priority. So praise and worship is one type of prayer, committing our life or commitment to God. When we commit our life to God, it, it includes and commit our life to his will and his purpose. This includes prayer. and We're dedicating our lives to God. Lord, I am sold out. I commit and I surrender my life to you. And then there's petition. Another type of prayer is when we make requests of God. We, we, we always worship him before we make requests. Always acknowledge him before we make requests. And so petitions may be, as we're going to talk about, asking, seeking, and knocking. Supplication is another word that Pastor Wright talked about last night for asking or beseeching God or strongly appealing to him in behalf of a need. And then there's confession and repentance. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the prayer of confession, repenting and asking forgiveness for our sins. And then there is intercession, praying for other people. And right now we need to intercede for our president and his wife. We need to intercede for our nation. We need to intercede for law enforcement. We need to intercede for young black males. We need to intercede for all males. We need to intercede for the body of Christ, the church as a whole. As my spiritual mother said, the church is under attack. But we have to understand that it's not only the church. It, it's it's uh, our families. It, it's marriages. It's our children. It's schools. It's jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, when we are in the moment that we're in, who is going to stand in the gap? Who would be the one to plead our case? Who would be the one to stand in for somebody else? Will you be the one? Many of you have heard this testimony before, but just briefly I'm going to share again. For three and a half years, and I know uh, for three and a half years I prayed 
concerning an issue concerning one of my children who had gotten into a situation that was not her fault. She was just uh, in the wrong place at the wrong time. But she got us in trouble that could have cost her her, her livelihood. And, and I, because she was uh, it not, uh, not at fault, I, I began to pray and I began to call the saints together for 5 a.m. at 5 a.m. prayer. I would begin to pray, charges dismissed every time I pray. And I not only pray, charges dismissed, but I said I would not accept anything less than charges dismissed. And ladies and gentlemen, when you know, ladies and gentlemen, have a relationship with God, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word about in you ask what you will and it shall be done if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed you can speak to that mountain and that mountain be moved well this mountain was a felony that I knew my child did not need she didn't deserve it wasn't her fault in the wrong place at the wrong time for three and a half years I said the same thing I prayed the same prayer I restored the oh, made the same declaration I refused to accept anything less than charge just dismissed and just like Daniel in, in chapter Daniel chapter 10 he prayed for 21 days I want to encourage you as Pastor Wright and Pastor Whitaker has encouraged the people that God heard you the first time and ladies and gentlemen he heard me the first time but when we make that declaration ladies and gentlemen we keep that before our mind we keep that on our minds and in our spirit when we say listen I refuse to to accept anything less than charges dismissed. I got a lawyer who said I never lost a case. Check my record. Mm. He said I never lost a case. Check my record. But then when we went to court, his record changed. And he said, there is nothing on the table for your child but five years on probation and six months in a PDC. I looked at him. I looked at my child and said, the devil is a liar. And ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah, somebody needs to declare the devil is a liar. And before he said, go home and come back at 4 o'clock. And before we can go, I called one of my sisters in the Lord, and we agreed in prayer three and a half years of saying, I refuse to accept anything less than charges dismissed this lawyer said I, I've never lost the case check my record then he changes and says all this on the table is five years probation and six months in jail I said the devil is a liar you got to learn to counteract the enemy with your with words of faith you got to learn to speak words of faith and before we can go back to the courtroom my, my child called me and said mama you don't have to come back I said what happened she said the charges was dismissed on me I need somebody to run around that coffee table to run around that bathroom to run out in the yard and give God glory because just like he dismissed her charges he'll heal your family just like he dismissed the charges he'll save your child just like he did watch this now and that was just the beginning for my child because God began to do a work in her life, even after that, began to do even more for her. That moment increased her faith in him. And ladies and gentlemen, there are moments, that there are things that God will allow just to increase our faith. But I want to encourage you that, listen, with no matter the doctor's report, somebody needs to say, the devil is a liar. My family is healed. No matter what the lawyer says, listen, my, my marriage is intact. The devil is a liar. We're going to be together to death do we part. I know what they're saying about your child, but listen, my child is not bipolar. I want to encourage you, the devil is a liar. My child is in his right mind, and he has the mind of Christ, and his mind is being renewed daily. Who is willing to make the devil a liar? Who is willing to say, devil, uh-uh, you a liar, and begin to declare the word of God, which is truth and release the word of God out of your mouth. But I want to, I prayed for three and a half years, but he did hear me <laughs> the first time. Sometimes answers don't come right away, but you still have to be persistent. Daniel didn't waver, and you can't waver in your faith. And so that's all we have time for today. Don't waver in your faith. God heard you, believer, the first time you made the request. All you got to do is be still and know that he is God. Hold your peace and let the Lord 
fight the battles. This lawyer said, I never lost the case, but he was human. But I know a man that truly has never lost the case, and it was God that worked that out, not the lawyer. It was God that worked that out, not the lawyer. But had Mama not been praying, the outcome could have been different. God uses people to, 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 to serve and to minister to others. God uses us, and that's why we pray. God use, he wants to use us. He wants to use you. And I want to encourage us. We go on these 31 days of prayer and fasting to pray without ceasing. I am going to ask Lady Michelle Whitaker to take us in with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you this morning. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, God, because there is none like you. God, even your name is great, and we love you, Lord. We adore you. We worship you, God. We magnify you, God. We lift you up. We thank you for who you are and being our Father, God. We thank you for accepting us as we are, God, and loving us, God, the way you do, making us your children. God, we just thank you for being our provider, being our healer, being our deliverer, God. God, you are all that we can ever ask and even more. God, we just confess our sins to you. We know that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our righteousness, God. We ask you to forgive us of our sins of commission, our sins of commission. God, we ask you to forgive us for our unforgiveness, God. Forgive us for our doubting you, God. Forgive us for the things that we say in, the, in our thoughts, God. God, we thank you for forgiving us, God. We thank you in advance because it's already done just for the asking. God, thank you for delivering us and setting us free, God, from our own lustful desires, our own ungodly thoughts, our own ungodly doings, God. God, we thank you for uh, providing for us, God. We thank you for being there for us. We thank you for standing in the gap, God. We thank you for saving us, God, and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that you've done so far, God, all that you're doing right now, God, and all that you're going to do for us, God. We thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for listening, God. We thank you for our homes, our children, our jobs, God, things that we take for granted, God, and just think they're supposed to be there automatically, God. But we know today that it is because of you. We thank you for who we are because we know, too, that is because of you. God, we thank you for our life, health, and strength because it is because of you that we have our life and our being and who we are. God, we ask you today that you look upon the people, God, that are calling out and crying out to you, God. God, we don't know everything that they're asking for, but you do. God, we stand in the gap for them. We ask them to ask you to answer their prayers, God, answer their cries, God. Heal their, heal their bodies, God. Restore their marriages, God. Help their children, God. God, we pray for those that are unsaved, untaught, unchurched. And we ask you, God, to save them. We ask them to, that you put them in a position that someone will cross their path and introduce them to you, God. We ask you to touch their hearts right now. Break up the fallow ground, God, so that they will be able to receive. God, we ask those of us that are already saved that we not miss the opportunity to introduce someone to God, to compel someone to come, God. God, we ask you to give us the boldness to minister to those that are hurting and lost. And God, in the end, we'll be so careful to give you the praise. We'll be so careful to give you the honor and all the glory, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we say all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Hallelujah. There are so many people that have sent in, sent in, thank you, Lady Whitaker, sent in prayer requests for those that are stricken with COVID-19. So many people pray for my mom, pray for my grandmother, pray for my loved one, my husband. So many people, even our president. And right now, God, we lift them up in the name of Jesus. We lift up President Trump. We lift up uh, First Lady. We lift up those names that, I, I don't want to say those names on the air, but I want you to put, put those names before you. Write those names down on a piece of paper right now. If you know somebody that's dealing with COVID-19, write their names down on a piece of paper right now. And as we pray this prayer, uh, the, as make these declarations, I want you to begin to, to uh, we, let us stand in agreement for them. That right now, Father, we pray for those that have been affected by this virus, this COVID-19, in the name of Jesus. And we ask you to surround them with your presence today. We call on you, Jehovah Rapha, today, a healer that makes all bitter things sweet. You are the God who takes sick is out of the midst of them. Oh, God, for those who are struggling to breathe on their own, Lord God, we ask that you breathe life into their lungs right now. We ask you to breathe life into them, God, in the name of Jesus, as you breathe into Adam, the breath of life. We ask you to breathe life into their lungs in the name of Jesus. We ask you to clear their respiratory system. We ask you to remove all infection in the name of Jesus. We ask you to rid their lungs of pneumonia, oh, God. We apply the blood of Jesus. Jesus to their lungs right now and put a demand on their bodies to be healed. In the name of Jesus, let your will be done. Mm. Oh, God, we thank you right now that not all sickness is unto death. And we give you glory right now, for there is nothing too hard for you, and nothing is impossible to those who believe. We offer this prayer of faith that you will heal, oh, God, those names, oh, God, uh, th those bodies, sick bodies, in the name of Jesus. You will raise them up off their sick bed. And if they have committed any sins, they will be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Father, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, and we we give you glory today, God. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for you are the God of all might. You are the God of all strength. Sickness and disease has no power over us, even uh, something as a headache, high blood pressure, heart disease, uh, uh, issues with uh, a sore throat. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, sickness has no power over us. We are forgiven and free from sin and guilt. We are dead to sin and alive to righteousness. We thank you that Jesus bore our sins on the tree, and we with his stripes, we are healed. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, he bore our sins. He bore our sickness. He bore our pain. And we thank you for that right now. We give no place to pain or sad about C thyroid disease. We give no place to pain or sickness in the name of Jesus. For you sent your word to heal us. And we thank you for Psalm 91, that no evil will befall us. Neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. For you give your angels charge over us to keep us us in all our ways, just like you had an angel there for Elijah. We thank you that, Lord God, you've given angels charge over us, just like you were there for Elijah when he was going through this dark moment. Oh, God, we thank you that you've given angels charge over us, just like they provided for him. We thank you, Lord, that you provide for us. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we declare that in our pathway is life, health, and healing today. We bless your name right now, and we refuse to allow sickness to dominate our body. We refuse to allow cancer, oh God, to have, oh God, to wreak havoc in the name of Jesus. Oh cancer has got to leave and not come back again. Oh COVID has got to leave and not come back again. Thyroid disease is God. I pray and lift up my neighbor's mother right now, Miss Brown. And we declare right now that she is healed from cancer in the name of Jesus. Oh God, in in the name of Jesus, oh God, we ask you to move on our body right now, and we declare that the cancer has got to leave. Leukemia, leukemia, acute leukemia has got to leave and not come back again. Right now, in the name of Jesus, she shall live and not die and declare the word, works of the Lord. Oh God, in the land of the living. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we bless your most holy and precious name. Miss Fern Brown will live. Oh God, the, the leukemia will leave and not come back again. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we make a demand on our bodies to release 
release the right chemicals. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, every organ functions perfectly right now. Every organ and tissue in our body functions the way you created it to function. And right now on this Faith Friday, we forbid any malfunction in the name of Jesus. Gross and tumors have got to leave. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, God, our heart beats with the rhythm of life. Heart disease has got to leave. Our blood pressure has got to leave. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up my aunt and cousin. In the name of Jesus, that she is healed. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you that there is nothing too hard for you. We bless you that you're the God of all might. You're Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah Nisi, and we give you glory. We give you glory today as we intercede or stand in the gap for those, oh God, who can't pray for themselves right now. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Will you be the one to stand in the gap over these next 30 days? That's all. We have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have time for today. If there's anyone that's not saved, Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you've raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of of my life right now today. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to all of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things are new in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, join us Monday morning live at 5. But Todd Delaney is going to take us home with Psalm 18. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I love you, oh Lord, my strength. I love you, oh Lord, my strength. I In whom I take refuge, he is my shield. Power, I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord. <laughs> Who is worthy to be praised? Ah. Said I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? I will. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is? Who is worthy to be praised? I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? 
And friends, for the last hour, you have been listening to Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live this morning from the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated, 702 R.C. Davis Parkway, out of Waycross, Georgia, where the pastor is, Pastor Samuel Sellers III. Who is worthy to me? The host of Command Your Mornings, Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers, comes your way Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. And the morning program.